so we thought we'd bring these folks in to the to the uh, interrogation rooms, but it just uh, it failed miserably because their training, their experience was so different. They, they, they weren't able to work with, with the CITF and the FBI agents effectively, uh, and, and so we, we had to just break it apart. Their training was different. They, they, they at the time, and they still do quite a bit of training uh, in things called uh, uh, pride up and ego down and, uh, and, and ego, ego down harsh, uh, where, where their training uh, had told them that, yeah, that, that that is trying to disparage someone so their ego is depleted or, or yelling at them or, or, or trying to make them feel bad um, and, and, and based on uh, the career that I've had and, and that my colleagues have had uh, we understand that, that that's not a that's not a good approach uh, not to even mention what that would do to your memory if you're looking to extract information elicit intelligence from individuals you want someone who's in a relaxed state who can recall and remember things because a lot of these folks were cooperating. A lot of these folks wanted to give us information. A, a lot of times, their own tactics are what prevented them from getting intelligence. So, so, so that th th those techniques, and th there's there's been a lot of research subsequent to that, and, and even surveys of some of these folks who have that training in the field, who, who now say they all revert back to re rapport building approaches, because even though they were trained in it, when they get to the field, they found they just weren't effective. It was quite difficult. We, we would make progress with a detainee at some point and find that uh, the JTF folks went in the middle of the night and, and started, you know, uh, interrogating them very harshly, and it, it would disrupt the progress we made, and we'd have to rehabilitate it and things like that.